Hi, it's Karen, Charlie. Back again. We're here. We thought today we were going to just talk a little bit about what happened um, uh, before I got sick, when I got sick, and since I've been home. Uh, this is unrehearsed, so God help us. I want Charlie to tell his experience through this, and then um, I'll comment on mine. Go. What am I doing? You're telling your experience with my... Okay, yeah. Where are we at? The uh, emergency room? No, just wherever you want to just start. Just going to the doctors. Where, wherever you uh, want to start. The, 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 the doctors ended up sending us to imaging for a CAT scan, which at least I've been there before, so I could, it was easy to find it. Way in Savannah. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> from, from, from there, uh, they, they said that they sent you to emergency yeah. at the hospital. Yeah. So this time we're going to a good hospital. I've been there before, but we weren't quite sure where it was, so we got directions. Now all I actually had to do was go another 200 yards down the street. And he would have found it. I found it. Went into the emergency room area where I dropped. Kieran off, <clears throat> and one thing, you know this is a good hospital, because the emergency room is always full and there's never any parking spaces outside. So I had to go around the parking lot about seven times before I finally found some place to park and go in. But they brought me right down to the little room area where Kieran was. And <clears throat> sat there for about a half an hour. Doctors came in, talked to Karen. You now that they also talked to me. There's, their telephones are set up very nicely, where their voice goes directly to text, and this works like you know, the first time, so uh, I at least knew what was going on. They're going to operate again. Well, they're going to operate for the first time, but... You know, they just basically told me uh, later on that early evening uh, they were going to schedule her for an appendectomy. Yeah. So she sent me home which was good. I take care of the dogs, and I don't like driving at night, so the doctors promised that they'd get in touch with me and let me know how everything was going. Sophie. In the meantime, I contacted my son up in New York, and he called the hospital, so rather than me trying to see if my phone was ringing, they got in touch with him, and he was able to send me an email. So, at least <clears throat> this time around, I pretty much knew what was going on all the time. Uh, all right, let's stop there for you, and I'll just kind of catch up to where yeah. he was. I vomited for 12 hours. I had, this is going to be too much. TMI, but I had diarrhea for a day and a half after the vomiting, and by the next morning, I called the doctor and, and said, I, you know, you got to see me, there's something wrong. He saw me, sent me to CAT scan, which Charlie explained. Um, I was a little nervous once they said appendicitis, because... I kind of thought that if I went under the knife, 
one more time that uh, might not be so lucky, okay? You, don't, you never know, and I was just, uh, the last thing I wanted was an operation. And when I went to the emergency room um, at Memorial Hospital in Savannah, a level one trauma hospital, excellent hospital, um, the intake nurse could see I was petrified, which I was. And I explained to her, and she understood why I was. And she's hugging me, and she's kissing me, and she's, don't worry, don't worry, you're, this is a different hospital, you're going to be okay. Um, so she put me in a room, and uh, while I was waiting for the doctor, she came over, and she put a little angel, a little metal, in my hand, a little guardian angel, and she said, you hold on to this, you're going to be fine. And uh, then I said to her, do you think that um, there might be a chaplain available? So she said, I'm sure I can find one. And she did. And I had a nice little session with the chaplain. And um, he promised that he would come see me the next day after the surgery. And uh, I said, OK. You know, that would be good. I'd, I'd like you to come see me. I said, make sure you check before, before you go looking for me. You know, check the room numbers. Check, make sure I made it to a room. But anyway, surgery. Well, the, the most shocking thing that happened at the hospital, let's put it this way. The surgeon that I had at this hospital asked me, uh, why I went to St. Joseph's Hospital in the first place last year. And I said, because I didn't know where to go, and I had to pick one of three, and I picked the closest hospital to my house. And he just said, oh, okay. Uh, and I told him that I had asked when I was so, when I realized, came to enough in St. Joseph's after a few days, uh, and asked to be transferred to Memorial. And St. Joseph refused, told me I was too compromised, and they could not move me. Not only that, they said, no other doctor would take my case because it's complicated and, well, let's say complicated, OK? I say they screwed up. They can say complicated, whatever. But anyway, they told me no other doctor would accept me, uh, accept me as a patient. So they scared the pants off of me, to be frank, because I could imagine get, finally getting out of there and then not having any place to go. So I'm sorry. This just, this just makes me so angry that I get emotional about it. But anyway, the, the surgeon looked at me, and he said, and you believed them? And I said, well, I did. I did believe them. Because they, they said it several times. It wasn't just once. It was, no, but you know, you're not going to get a doctor to take your case. Not only that, one of my doctors, I was a little rude at St. Joseph's Hospital and argumentative. And I didn't want to see the doctors that worked on me because I knew somebody screwed up, but I didn't know who. So I had a doctor in. Um, uh, St. Joseph's that threatened to drop me as a patient after he had been treating me because of my attitude. He didn't like it because I, I was questioning him and he didn't like it. So I had to beg him, literally apologize and say, I'm so sorry, I'll do everything you say, uh, just take me back as a patient. How do you like them apples? Hmm. That's why I say, get in a hospital, get out of a hospital. There, I got worse every day, not better. And that's why they had gotten me in such a position. I didn't know enough to really, I knew my rights, 
And that's why I asked to be transferred. But I didn't, I wasn't forceful enough. And Charlie wasn't being told anything. And my son was looking into getting me to New York or Boston. And he, he was finding doctors, but he wasn't, com uh, he wasn't um, communicating that to me. And besides, I didn't really want to go to New York or Massachusetts. I wanted to go to the other hospital in town. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be flown anyplace. I just wanted to be transferred to Memorial, where I should have gone in the first place. But anyway, I'm there now. I got through the operation wonderfully. Uh, I woke up. I was so surprised when I woke up. And the nurse said, you know, it's all over and you're fine. I said, the operation's over? And she said, yeah, and you're fine. Uh, we're going to bring you to recovery. See, that never happened. That never happened at St. Joseph's. I never really woke up. I woke up and was vomiting, and they, after somebody, one of the doctors saved my life, and he did, literally, because nobody else was realizing I was vomiting. He, I don't know what he did to me, but whatever. I was aspirating, and he got me stable, and then had me transferred to ICU, where I went totally downhill after that. But anyway, um, I didn't have a good experience with the surgery, and I had had other surgeries, and I never had big problems with surgery. So it isn't like I'm afraid. I was never. I wasn't afraid of St. Joseph's when I went in. I was petrified while I was there, because I knew things were not right. But I didn't. I didn't have the stick to it enough to do anything about it. Okay. Now we're just gonna go quickly to when I got home. Enough is enough, I'm fine, I'm healing. I got a spot that isn't healing too well, but what else is new, Murphy's Law, da 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 da, doesn't matter. Isn't it great to have me home? Oh, what? Isn't it great to have me home? Uh, it's wonderful. You ever try having conversations with your dogs? <laughs> just doesn't work. No, he was happy that I was home, but when I got home... So that conversation is not exactly work either, but we yeah. tried. But, uh, wasn't I a little grouchy when I got home? Aren't I a little grouchy right now? You yeah, what? Aren't I grouchy? Are you grouchy? No! <laughs> I had very little patience to start no, out. out of time. Yeah. I know. I, I had very little patience when I started, uh, before the operation. I, have, I think they took my patience out. I have no patience. I am very sure. And I, I love him. He tries to help me. He tries his best. And I have no patience. So, you people that think I'm a lovely lady... You haven't got a clue. I'm really not. I'm a. I don't. I don't try to be a witch, but I am. What can I tell you? Okay. I want to make sure I'll be able to download this. This, as I say, we're back. Uh, I'm going to be doing one or two videos to save and upload later uh, today. But uh, and we'll get a we'll get a real topic next time to talk about. If you have any topics you want us to discuss, let us know and we will. Um, we're excited because we got company coming in next week and my matron of honor and her husband, my matron of honor was his cousin, so I mean, oh, we're, they're coming by motorcycle and they live in New Hampshire. So it's going to take them three days to get here. They did it once before about five years ago, so they're doing it again. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we gotta go, huh? Gotta Thank go you. quick. Peace, uh. hugs, love, God bless. See you soon. <laughs>